A continuous distillation column for producing vodka has to be controlled precisely. I have found that the rate at which steam is added needs to be controlled with a precision of about 1% to get a good azeotropic product while minimising alcohol losses to the bottoms. This control parameter drifts with things like ambient temperature in the room, the temperature of incoming water and the vagaries of peristaltic pump drift that I discussed in my video of that name. That means that to run it successfully for days or weeks requires closed loop feedback control where the wash feed rate is kept constant and the steam flow rate is adjusted in response to continuously monitored parameters. The ideal parameters would be the alcohol concentration of the product and the bottoms, but making a digital parrot operate reliably and continuously is difficult and expensive. It's easier, cheaper and probably more reliable to use temperatures as surrogates. There are two temperature-based parameters that we need. One is some index of the length of the isothermal part of the column. The other parameter we need is the bottom temperature. The length of the isothermal section will determine how high the proof of the spirit is, and the bottom temperature will determine how much alcohol is lost to the bottoms. If the isothermal section gets too short, we reduce the steam flow. If the bottom temperature gets too low, we increase it. The length of the isothermal section is pretty easy. The temperature rises quite quickly below it, so you don't have to be that precise in temperature measurements. For the bottom's temperature, it's different. Here is the phase diagram of the alcohol water system. And if we zoom in on the top left-hand corner of the graph, we can see that to get the alcohol content well below 1%, we're going to have to get the temperature very close to the boiling point of water, within a fraction of a degree. I found that keeping it within about 0.3 degrees Celsius of the boiling point of water pretty reliably keeps the alcohol content under 0.1%. That precision is not too difficult to achieve as the DS18B temperature sensors that I'm using have enough resolution, but there is a significant problem. This graph plots the boiling point of water against pressure. It explains why you can't get water very hot up a mountain, because the pressure is too low, and why volcanic magma can pour out of the mid-Atlantic ridge into the sea without boiling it, because the pressure is so high. If we take that part of the graph that covers the commonly encountered range of atmospheric pressures at sea level, shown here as the green band, then we can see that over this range, which is about 990 to 1030 millibars, the boiling point of water changes by just over a degree centigrade. That's quite a problem if we're trying to set our temperature at 0.3 degrees below the boiling point. If we look back at the phase diagram of water ethanol, we can see that a 1.2 degree change in temperature can lead to our bottom's alcohol concentration going up by 0.8%, and that's by mass, so by volume it's about 1%. That's 10% of our wash alcohol, which is an unacceptably high wastage. We can use a barometer to adjust for the changing boiling point of water. Although it is a complication, it's still a lot easier than using measurement of alcohol content with the digital parrot. And the instrument is inexpensive and easy to use. It's a BMP 280. This is a digital atmospheric temperature and pressure sensor chip made by Bosch. It can be bought as a breakout board for around $1.50. It is used with a computer or controller such as an Arduino or Raspberry Pi and it can communicate via either the SPI or the I2C protocol. SPI is a communication system that has a clock, two data lines and a chip select line so that each SPI device has to have its own chip select line. I use the Raspberry Pi SPI bus to control the stepper motors for wash and steam. The Pi is only set up to provide two chip select lines. You can get around this fairly easily. You nominate specific GPIO pins to act as the chip select lines for the various SPI devices. In your software, you address all the devices using the same SPI port, but independently of the software that controls the SPI, before you address the device, you pull down its chip select GPIO pin and then pull it up again at the end of the communication. But these chosen GPIO pins must not be either of the ones that are designated as SPI0 or SPI1 on the Pi. That's a bit of a pain if you've already got it set up with two SPI devices because the wiring of these has then to be changed. 
so I use the BMP280 in I2C mode. That makes it easier, but it does mean that you have to get your head around three computer communication protocols. One wire for the temperature sensors, SPI for the motor controllers, and I2C for the barometer. I expect that whatever I end up next will use USB. The I2C protocol requires that all the data lines are pulled up with resistors to the VDD positive rail, as the protocol works by the logic circuits pulling them down. What's nice about this little breakout board is that all of the resistors are included, so all lines are pulled up, including the one that selects the I2C mode. So to connect it, all you need is four wires. You connect VDD to 3.3 volts. This chip can't tolerate more than 4.6 volts, so the 5 volt rail will kill it. You then connect ground and you connect the I2C clock and data lines like this. This is quite a commonly used device and the software to read from it is widely available for things like the Arduino and Raspberry Pi. There are technicalities about enabling the I2C system and loading the software to drive it, but these are well covered by online resources. The pressure data is used to adjust the target temperature for the column bottom thermometer. The temperature and pressure sensors have enough resolution to do this quite precisely, but they are not well calibrated, so we need to do a calibration run with only steam and no alcohol. With the wash switched off, and the steam in my case set to run about 5 grams a minute, I waited for 20 minutes until temperatures had stabilised, and found that the temperature sensor was reading 98.625 degrees Celsius, while the pressure sensor was reading 107.5 millibars. I use the same coefficient for the pressure data as given in this function, and adjust the constant to allow for calibration. You set up this equation using the measured pressure and temperature, and solving for the constant. We now program it as though we were always at the same pressure of 107.5 millibars and select the target temperature 0.3 degrees below the pressure adjusted result. Once it's implemented, it works quite well. I cannot say that it makes a difference to the product quality, but it does reduce wastage of alcohol to the bottoms, improving yield by 5-10% over the system that does not use a barometer.